More than 40 million people travel between Southern California and Las Vegas every year, and the journey often dissolves into hours of crawling traffic along Interstate 15. The gridlock has become a symbol of America's dependence on cars and planes, underscoring the absence of a faster, cleaner alternative. That is finally beginning to change. Construction is now underway on a high-speed rail line that will cut the trip to just two hours, offering travelers a seamless, all-electric option that bypasses the desert bottleneck entirely. This is more than a transportation upgrade. It is a transformative vision for how Americans might move in the 21st century. With trains designed to reach nearly 200 miles per hour, purpose-built stations serving as modern mobility hubs, and an alignment engineered for safety, sustainability, and speed, the project redefines what's possible in American rail travel. It promises not only to ease congestion, but also to slash carbon emissions, generate tens of thousands of jobs, and create a model for future corridors deemed too short to fly, too far to drive. Today, let's delve into California's $12 billion Brightline West high-speed rail megaproject. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button and like this video, as it's the best way to support this channel. Travel between Southern California and Las Vegas has been notoriously slow. The 270-mile trip along Interstate 15 often takes more than four hours, and much longer on weekends and holidays when traffic slows to a standstill. This bottleneck has long highlighted the need for a faster, cleaner alternative. A high-speed rail link has been discussed for decades, and the modern version emerged in the mid-2000s with a proposal called Desert Express. That plan envisioned a 185-mile line from Victorville to Las Vegas, but doubts from investors and regulators stalled its progress. The project revived when Fortress Investment Group, parent company of Florida's Brightline Service, acquired it. Rebranded as Brightline West, the route was extended from Victorville to Rancho Cucamonga, creating a crucial link to Metrolink San Bernardino Line and integrating with Los Angeles' transit network. A major breakthrough came in 2023, when federal regulators approved a new alignment running mostly in the median of Interstate 15. This choice simplified land acquisition, reduced environmental impacts, and improved coordination with Caltrans and Nevada Department of Transportation. Backed by the 2021 federal infrastructure law, Brightline West is now seen as a model of private innovation with public support, aiming to ease congestion, cut emissions, and set the stage for future U.S. high-speed rail projects. Brightline West is a 218-mile fully electrified high-speed rail line that will connect Las Vegas, Nevada to Rancho Cucamonga, California reducing the journey to just over two hours compared with the four-hour drive on Interstate 15. Designed for sustained speeds of 180 to 200 miles per hour, it will be the first American rail system built to true international high-speed standards and stands as a landmark in American transport innovation. The project will include four main stations, Las Vegas, Apple Valley, Hesperia, and Rancho Cucamonga. The Las Vegas Terminal, an 80,000-square-foot facility on the South Strip, will provide direct access to Allegiant Stadium, Harry Reid International Airport, and the Convention Center, positioning it at the heart of the city's entertainment district. In California, Rancho Cucamonga will serve as a multimodal hub, linking Brightline West with Metrolink's San Bernardino Line for direct connections to Los Angeles and other Southern California destinations. The station will also integrate with bus rapid transit and shuttle services to Ontario International Airport. All stations are planned with retail, dining, and lounges to enhance the passenger experience. Supporting infrastructure includes a major maintenance facility in Apple Valley and nearly 110 grade separations to eliminate road-level crossings. Trains are planned every 45 minutes during peak times with about 50 trains daily. The carriages will consist of Siemens American Pioneer 220 train sets, seven car units manufactured in a new U.S. factory. Each train will seat roughly 450 passengers, offering wide-bodied cars for comfort, level boarding for accessibility, 
distributed traction for efficiency, and aerodynamics designed for desert conditions. Environmental stewardship is a defining feature. About 96% of the alignment will run in the I-15 median, reducing land costs, limiting disruption to communities, and minimizing impacts on the desert. The corridor will be fully grade-separated, with bridges, viaducts, and underpasses integrated into existing highway interchanges. To address ecological concerns, Brightline West will build three dedicated wildlife overcrossings and enhance culverts and fencing to reconnect habitats for species like bighorn sheep. With an estimated $12 billion price tag, Brightline West is both a major transportation project and a model of sustainable, future-ready rail design in the U.S. Construction of Brightline West began with a ceremonial groundbreaking in Las Vegas on April 22, 2024. Heavy civil works are ramping up in phases, with Nevada and California both overseeing portions of the alignment. In Nevada, the Las Vegas terminal site covers 110 acres south of the Strip, with direct freeway access and ample space for future intermodal integration. In California, Apple Valley hosts the line's main maintenance base, while Hesperia serves as an additional inline stop. Rancho Cucamonga will feature elevated high-speed platforms connected to the city's existing Metrolink station. Engineering challenges are substantial. The line must cross the Cajon Pass, a geologically complex area with steep gradients and heavy freight rail traffic. Brightline West will use viaducts, tunnels, and passing sidings, tailored to high-performance passenger trains. The desert environment also poses unique difficulties. Extreme heat, flash flooding, and sandstorms must all be accounted for in track design and drainage systems. A hallmark of the project is its integration with highway infrastructure. By occupying the median of I-15, construction teams must carefully coordinate with Caltrans to manage traffic while erecting bridges and track structures. This median alignment simplifies land acquisition, but demands logistical precision to avoid disrupting one of the busiest interstates in the region. Meanwhile, Siemens Mobility is establishing a new manufacturing plant in Horseheads, New York, dedicated to producing Brightline West's AP220 fleet. Production will begin in 2026, ensuring a steady pipeline of U.S.-built train sets ready for commissioning. Brightline West combines private investment with targeted public support. In December 2023, the project secured a $3 billion federal grant under the Federal State Partnership Program, the largest such award in U.S. rail history. Additionally, the U.S. Department of Transportation allocated $3.5 billion in tax-exempt private activity bonds, $1 billion in 2020 and $2.5 billion in 2024. By 2025, the project further tapped the bond market, raising billions more for construction and train procurement. Altogether, the financial package supports a total capital cost of around $12 billion. The project's timeline is ambitious. Preparatory work began in 2024, and by 2025, heavy construction is accelerating along the I-15 corridor in both Nevada and California, with grading, utility relocation, and bridge works already underway. Siemens new train factory will start production in 2026, aligning with Brightline West's testing and commissioning schedule. Although initially planned to open before the 2028 Los Angeles Olympics, the revised target is late 2028. Even so, completing a high-speed system in just four years would be unprecedented in American rail history. Brightline West faces significant challenges alongside its bold ambitions. Engineering through the Cajon Pass and across desert terrain introduces the risk of delays and cost overruns, while the project's dependence on Siemens' new factory for an entirely fresh fleet of trains makes timely delivery a potential bottleneck. Building within the I-15 median reduces land acquisition, but requires constant coordination with highway agencies adding layers of complexity. Criticism has also centered on financing. Though promoted as a private venture, the line relies heavily on public subsidies and tax-exempt bonds. 
Skeptics question whether ridership will be strong enough to sustain operations and debt repayment, especially in a country with little to no history of high-speed rail. Others argue that prioritizing a leisure-oriented Las Vegas route overlooks more pressing urban corridors. Environmental concerns persist too, with some conservationists warning of habitat fragmentation despite the planned wildlife crossings. Political pressure is also high, as the project already missed its target of opening before the 2028 Olympics. Despite these hurdles, the benefits are far-reaching. The line is projected to cut travel times to just over two hours, remove more than 3 million car trips annually, and slash carbon emissions by 400,000 tons annually. It will create over 35,000 jobs during construction, 1,000 permanent operations roles, and spark new development around stations in Las Vegas and Rancho Cucamonga. For all its challenges, Brightline West offers the promise of cleaner, faster, and more sustainable travel. Brightline West is a test of whether America can finally embrace true high-speed rail. If completed as planned, it will be the nation's first fully electrified system operating at international standards of speed and comfort. Its success could spark similar projects in corridors too short to fly and too far to drive, such as Dallas to Houston or Chicago to St. Louis. Future growth is already on the table. The proposed High Desert Corridor would link Apple Valley to Palmdale, connecting Brightline West with California's statewide high-speed rail network. Rancho Cucamonga's integration with Metrolink and Ontario Airport strengthens regional mobility. While new station districts promise to reshape local economies, challenges remain desert construction, cost control, and cultural resistance. But with federal support, private investment, ecological safeguards, and U.S.-made trains, Brightline West could redefine what's possible for American rail. What are your thoughts on this mega project? Leave a reply in the comments section. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.